Hello and welcome to Delaney Studios YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw this lilac bush. So the tools that you'll need today are your 2B pencil for planning, 4B pencil for grey shading, 6B pencil for your darkest darks or black, um, any black shading. Then I've got my smudging sticks or paper stumps. So I've got two different sizes here. If you don't have these, you can just use a tissue and you can also uh, roll the tissue, corner of the tissue between your fingers to create a bit of a point and you can use that as a fine tip um, smudging stick alternative. I've got my white eraser and I've got my kneadable rubber. If you don't have a kneadable rubber, you can use blue tack. Okay, so get a new piece of paper ready and make sure it's in portrait and I'm going to zoom in for you to get ready to start. So get your 2B ready. Okay, so I've got my 2B pencil here. Now what I'm going to do is roughly plan out where everything's going to go. So it's going to take up the majority of your page. It's going to be quite large. So I'm going to do a bit of a guideline, just a soft one for how tall I want my lilac flower cluster to be. And I'm going to come right out to the side with my background cluster and my leaves are going to come really close to the bottom. Step number two is to break it down into shapes or lines. So the easiest way to do this lilac bush is to break it down into shapes. So I'm just going to do a rough outline of how I want my lilac bush size to be. Kind of like a long teardrop or a long pear. And I want a leaf coming out over this way, this big sad mouth. And it's going to run into another leaf over here. And my flower will disappear into the leaves. And then I've got a little one in the distance, little bunch of flowers in the distance. Yeah. So that's all your basics done. So you can now get your eraser. And you can get rid of all of your guidelines. We don't need them anymore. Keep your outlines because we'll fill those in. The guidelines can go. I'm going to keep these nice and soft. So now we can start breaking it down into the individual flowers inside our lilac little bunch of flowers. So I'm going to zoom in and we can get started on those. Okay, so we're going to start in our large lilac area. So these flowers are going to be overlapping, they're going to be on angles, they're going to be in all different sizes and shapes. Just make sure each of them has four petals. That's all you need to be concerned about and it will look very, very basic and strange when you first start this. But when we start add adding the shadows in, it makes so much more sense so don't get too concerned. So I'm going to do start with a little petal over here so it's like a happy face then another happy face little smiley mouth sad mouth happy mouth then going off into the leaf and you can do a little curve or backward C in the middle that is pretty much what they're all going to look like. So it's going to look very basic, but it will all come together in the end. Have some overlapping. So the next one I'm going to have overlapping. Just a curve on one side and a curve on the other. Curve on one side, curve on the other. Don't worry if you go over the lines. Curve, 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 and a little backward C in the middle. And we're going to fill this whole area. Some will be hiding, so there's a little one hiding here. And don't forget you can pause the video at any time if you feel like you're a bit, bit behind and you need to catch up. All I'm doing is filling this whole space with those, okay? And I'm going to change the angle later. Keep it simple.
as you can see, they don't need to be perfect. They don't all have to be the same. It's way more interesting when they're different. I'm not doing it exactly the same as the original one that I showed you. I'm changing mine up a bit. Can go a bit bigger flowers over here. Not perfect. Just as they all have four petals and a little backward C, and you're on the right track. I'll give you an advanced option if you'd like it. You do not have to do this one if you're little. We have some extra space on this side. If you're little, just keep continuing to fill in your space um, along this edge and along this edge. Um, but if you're older and you'd like an advanced option, we're going to change a few angles. So I've got an interesting one down here. So I'm going to start with a smiley mouth on the side and then join it in. And then you're going to add some petals that are a bit more squished. This one's really wide and then this one's squished. Put a little center in and that's a flower that's facing that way. Then we can infill A couple more flowers. Even add some extra petals sticking out. another little one on an angle and I'm just going to keep working my way up little petals here and there you can pop in I'm going to pop in another little one here. You can even pop in some little pods, like they haven't opened yet, little buds. So what they are, if you start in the middle and you do a little teardrop shape and you do four of those. One, two, 
three, four. So it's just like a sad mouth and two straight lines. That's a little closed one. And again, we can add some more petals in the background here. Maybe we can add another bud here. This one's a bit more on the side, but closed. Add a couple more petals over here. Just to break up that dark space. And we've got another tricky flower over here. So we start with a wide petal with a little smiley mouth on the side. And then all of my petals then come from there. That's another tricky one, sort of flat. Let's fill this space a little more with one more. Lots of overlapping going on. Then this top section is a whole bunch of closed flowers. So what we're going to do is do some stems first. And they can go anywhere. Still all with 2B. At the end of each of these, what we're going to do is an oval. An oval like that. And then we're going to put some little petal lines in. An oval. And petal lines. And it's good if they overlap. And don't do them too massive. Then you can infill if you've got any little gaps that you want to fill in. Start adding a few more and I'm going to add a few more little buds at the top here. And if you're worried about the gaps in here, you can fill them with other petals, but we're actually going to shade them so you won't see much of them later. Okay, so that's our basics of our lilac. So I'm going to zoom out and then we'll get ready to do some shading. Okay, so get your 4B ready. So I've got my 4B here. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to do some shading uh, on the inside of each of our flowers. So you don't have to do too much for this because you do want to leave some of it um, blank. You don't want to go too crazy. So what I would usually suggest is very, very soft shading just in the center of each petal, just scraping the page. If it's any darker than mine, it's too dark. So you want to just move your hand back on your pencil if it's too close. And the aim is to leave the outside white. The outside edge. It's a nice easy way just to create a little bit of 3D effect. It's extremely softly. The nicest thing to do is to keep them all in the same angle. So try not to spin your hand or your page around while you're doing your shading. Just keep it all in the same direction of colouring.
we'll be smudging these later as well. If that outline bothers you, you can get rid of it, but you actually won't see it when we do our smudging. And we're going to do some outlining of our petals as well. I'm not going to bother doing any colouring on the buds. The reason for that is I'm going to smudge them anyway. Don't worry about that one either. Okay, really, really basic. So what I want you to do now is skip up to your 6B, 6B pencil. And now what we're going to do is actually colour in between our little flowers, which is the trickiest part because you don't want to go too fast. If you go too fast, you're more than likely to actually accidentally go into a flower. You really don't want that. So slow is key. So it's quite dark in the center of the flower and then it can get softer as you come out so any little gaps that come a bit further out you can go just a bit more lightly this area just a bit lighter This bit takes the most concentration because you don't want to hit your petals. But if you do, it's okay. You can just use your needle or your normal eraser and just rub it out and try again. But darkness in the center getting softer as we go out to the sides. It's getting a bit softer on the edges here. Don't press as hard. When you get to this edge, what you can do is just colour outwards so soft that it just sort of disappears off the page. It gives the illusion that the flower is still going. So really, really soft colouring. As you come into the flower, you can go a little heavier. 
as you come out, it just gets softer and softer. Soft, 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 soft. Again here, softer, softer, softer until it disappears. This leaf will get filled with um, shading as well, so don't get too concerned about that. And make sure you do a double check um, when you think you finish, just to make sure you've actually got in between each flower because there's so many sections you can get a little bit confused. So again, darker in that centre area, softer on the sides. And the hard part, don't go over the stems, leave them white. If you need to sharpen your pencil, take time to do that. So darker at the base and then lighter as we come up. So this looks like it's disappearing off so we just do a double check make sure we're not missing anything I think that looks okay so what I can do with my 6b straight up is actually go over a little bit of an outline of the leaves it doesn't have to be perfectly straight I'm actually going to do a center line through the leaf as well and do the little vein lines. You can do as many as you like, it doesn't really matter as long as your center is a bit stronger. And we get to fill some of this in with shading, so it's going to be quite dark shading along this edge. to keep it all in the same sort of direction otherwise it can get really messy it's really dark in this area and as you come out it can get softer and softer you can cross hatch your shading so it's colouring one way and colouring back the other. You don't have to do that if you're little. And you definitely don't have to smudge your artwork. You can leave it really sketchy. The original artwork that this one is from that I showed you earlier, I didn't actually do much smudging on it. So it's totally up to you. It's a very rough sort of drawing, so just keep this section light. And then we have our main leaf down here. We can go over that with a bit of more of an outline. And center line. And you've got your little vein lines through the center.
and give it all a really light coat of shading. And then I'm going to come back over and do a second coat just down this edge. very rough it doesn't have to be perfect nothing perfect about it then we have this little area here so I want to switch back to 2b to do that because it's supposed to be disappearing into the distance this one's very straightforward to do but what I'd like you to do first is get your kneadable or blue tack and just rub out that outline a little bit just so you can just see it I can just see and then we're going to add some little random petal shapes in. I'm trying to give the illusion that it's in the background. You can't really see that much detail. Then we get our 2B and we just do some really soft shading. I'm using 2B for this shading instead of 4 or 6 because I just want it to be that much lighter. Pick a direction and stick to it. I'm going to go around the petals as much as you can. If you get a little bit of shading in it, it doesn't matter. And this is how artists achieve that disappearing into the background look. If you do get some of your shading inside those light petals, just use your kneadable rubber or blue tack to pull them out again. It keeps it really soft, super soft look. Okay, from here it's all smudging stuff, so and a little bit of 6B. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let you decide whether you want to do the smudging or not, but I'm definitely going to smudge down my leaf because I want to create a little bit of a background smudge here. I want to make it look like the leaves are causing a bit of shadow. I just want to smooth out some of my colouring lines a bit. And again, you can pull out any little highlights that you think need to happen. Just softens it. I'm not going to smudge this area. I feel like that's sort of smooth enough. But I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some quick smudges just down the centre of my flower petals. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you like that sketchy look, leave it alone. Or you can just do it on a few. You don't have to do it on all of them. And if you feel like your lines are a little bit scratchy, just that little bit of smudge really does help smooth it out. And it doesn't take very long. Okay, we've done all the petals already. So now what we're going to do is smudge these little buds. So you can leave the centres light, but if you can't, if you find that too tricky, smudge the whole thing and then just use your kneadable to pull out a little highlight in the middle. You can smudge it all grey, little highlight through the centre lines. 
I'm going to do that on these petals as well. Little buds, just to soften the lines up a little. You don't have to smudge the in-between colouring, but if yours is really stripy, you might actually want to smudge those. It also helps pick up a bit of lead if you feel like your smudging is not working that great. Your smudging stick or your tissue will only smudge what you put down. So if there's not enough down there to smudge, it's not going to work so well. So sometimes just rubbing it in these really dark areas really does help. So again, you don't have to smudge in these areas, but if you feel like it needs it, just to smooth out any harsh colouring lines. Just sort of smudges everything out. It's a bit more smoky sort of looking. Pull out any highlights if you feel it needs it. Always pull out the middle of these lines to make them look a little bit more 3D. And then the last thing I would do is I would get my 6V and I am going to sharpen this. Um, just to do a little bit of outlining. Okay, so I've got my 6B. I'm going to just do the centre of each of these little flowers and anywhere that you feel you might get a, they've gotten a little bit lost. You don't have to outline everything. And you can re-smudge those centres if you feel that they're a bit too strong. And again, you don't have to outline every single line. It doesn't need it. Maybe just the ones that overlap be quite useful. And I might just add a little bit more shading under this leaf because I feel like it's a little bit lost. Make that leaf pop out a little more. You don't have to do this if you feel like your shadow is enough. I do like a nice strong shadow. And then just get softer and softer and softer as you come down. Better than a straight outline. And smudge it.
See how that's just made it pop a little bit more off the page so it's a bit less basic. And if you're concerned that some of your flowers have lost any little highlights, you can just pinch a little point on your needle or blue tack and you can pull out some little highlights on the edges. And if you're happy, you definitely don't have to do that. So if you went a bit crazy with the smudging stick, just double check you've smudged all your flowers if you decided to do that. Because there's so many components to this one, it's always good to just take your time just to do a quick double check. If anything else needs a bit more of an outline, do that too. It just makes everything pop quite nicely. So of course the last thing to do is to get your 2B pencil back in your hands. Make sure you sign your name or write your name. Usually bottom left or right corner is generally where people will do it and pop the year in. Always important to put the year down so you know exactly when you did it. All right, so that's our lilac bush complete. So I'll see you guys for the next lesson.